For years, space fans have been waiting for the arrival of Sierra Space's Dream Chaser. It was billed as something fresh, something different from the capsules we've grown used to seeing. A small space plane, shaped almost like a mini shuttle, with the ability to carry cargo and eventually people into orbit. From the very start, it stood out as one of the most talked about projects in modern spaceflight. But as we move deeper into 2025, it's becoming clear that the long wait isn't over yet. When Dream Chaser was first introduced, it generated a lot of excitement. Unlike SpaceX's Dragon or Boeing's Starliner, which are both capsule-based, this was a winged spacecraft. Its design promised smooth runway landings on regular airport runways, quick access to delivered cargo, and a reusable structure that could reduce turnaround time between missions. The concept wasn't just practical, it was symbolic. It reminded many people of the retired space shuttle program, offering a chance to see winged spacecraft flying again. Despite the promise, reality has been much slower. Dream Chaser's first mission has been delayed again and again. Each year that passes without a launch makes it harder to believe the program is still on track. And in 2025, things look no different. The spacecraft named Tenacity, the first Dream Chaser expected to fly, still hasn't made it off the ground. The timeline has slipped so far that many now wonder whether Dream Chaser is starting to mirror the struggles of Boeing's Starliner. NASA has continued to speak positively about the program, but even the agency is starting to sound uncertain about when the first flight might actually happen. Dana Weigel, the ISS program manager, recently commented that Sierra Space still has important safety reviews to complete, along with software certification. These aren't small hurdles. They're essential for ensuring the vehicle is safe to operate, and they take time to get right. While NASA insists it will be ready to use Dream Chaser once Sierra delivers, the agency isn't offering a clear timeline. There's another big challenge that adds to the delay. Dream Chaser doesn't have its own rocket. Instead, it depends on United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur to carry it into orbit. And Vulcan itself has had its share of setbacks. Earlier this year, the rocket was scheduled to launch the USSF-106 mission, a high-priority flight for the U.S. military. That launch had already been pushed back once due to Vulcan's development troubles, and now it's taking priority because national security launches must come first. This means Dream Chaser has to keep waiting. This is part of a bigger scheduling problem that has haunted the program. When Vulcan was available, Dream Chaser wasn't ready. Now that Dream Chaser is closer to readiness, Vulcan's schedule is clogged with other missions. If Vulcan's USSF mission succeeds, it will move on quickly to other delayed launches, leaving no room for Dream Chaser this year. And if it fails, the fallout could ground Vulcan for months, pushing Dream Chaser even further into the future. Either way, the outlook isn't good. But not all of Dream Chaser's problems come from outside. Inside Sierra Space, the biggest challenge right now is software. The spacecraft's hardware has passed many of its physical tests. Structurally and mechanically, the vehicle has shown promise. But the software, the systems that control everything from navigation to safety, still isn't fully certified. Software issues are often more complicated than hardware failures because they require endless lines of code to be checked, tested, and verified. Until Sierra proves its software works reliably, NASA cannot allow the spacecraft to fly. This is very similar to what Boeing has faced with Starliner, although the exact problems differ. Boeing's struggles have mostly been hardware-based, with issues like thruster failures and helium leaks creating delays. Sierra Space's struggles are more about software, but in both cases, the outcome is the same. Long delays, missed deadlines, and growing doubts. The timing of all this is especially painful because the International Space Station doesn't have unlimited years left. The ISS is expected to retire around the early 2030s, which means that any new spacecraft hoping to support it must start flying soon to have a meaningful role. Every year, Dream Chaser waits on the ground is another year lost from that shrinking window. If it doesn't make its debut soon, its relevance could fade before it ever really begins. And that's where the comparison with Starliner becomes unavoidable. 
both Dream Chaser and Starliner, were meant to challenge the dominance of SpaceX's Dragon. Both were supposed to give NASA and its partners more options for spaceflight, yet neither has delivered on that vision. Starliner is stuck with continuing technical setbacks, and Dream Chaser is stuck in an endless cycle of delays. The result is the same. SpaceX's Dragon remains unchallenged at the top. Still, Dream Chaser does have some things working in its favor. Unlike Starliner, it hasn't suffered from visible flight test failures in recent years. Its physical systems seem reliable. The spacecraft's innovative design still excites engineers and fans alike, and NASA remains supportive, emphasizing that having multiple types of spacecraft available is always better than relying on just one. Dream Chaser isn't dead yet. It just hasn't proven itself. Looking beyond the first flight, Sierra Space does have plans for the future. The company is already building a second cargo Dream Chaser named Reverence, which would follow after Tenacity. There are also plans for a crude version of Dream Chaser, targeted for the late 2020s. If Sierra can get Tenacity into orbit successfully, these future versions could begin to take shape. But everything hinges on that critical first mission. Beyond the ISS, Sierra has also been working on larger ambitions. The company is developing the Life Habitat, an inflatable space module designed for long-duration missions in low Earth orbit. It has also partnered with Blue Origin in the past on the Orbital Reef Space Station project. Whether those partnerships continue or Sierra pursues its own path remains unclear. What is clear is that Dream Chaser is central to Sierra's role in future space operations. Without it flying, those larger plans cannot move forward. The spacecraft's design still offers advantages that capsules like Dragon or Starliner cannot match. Its wings fold up to fit neatly inside a rocket fairing. It can land on conventional runways, offering quick turnaround and easier access to cargo. It also carries an optional cargo module called Shooting Star that increases payload capacity and flexibility. For NASA, having these different features available could add important redundancy and reliability to space logistics. And then there's the symbolic factor. Dream Chaser carries the legacy of the space shuttle. Even though it's much smaller, the winged design connects directly to an era of American space exploration that many people miss. That emotional connection still matters, especially when public excitement plays a role in how space programs are supported and funded. All of this makes one point very clear. Dream Chaser must launch soon. Its first flight is more than just a test. It's a proof of concept, a demonstration that years of work can finally produce real results. Without it, the spacecraft risks becoming another example of big promises that never fully deliver. Meanwhile, SpaceX's Dragon just keeps flying. Since 2019, Dragon has become the backbone of NASA's crew and cargo operations. It has carried astronauts to the ISS 19 times without a major failure and delivered cargo over 30 times. It is the only spacecraft currently carrying both crew and cargo missions for NASA. This year alone, it has already flown multiple crew and cargo flights, proving its consistency yet again. Dragon's strength isn't just in reliability, it also has numbers on its side. With five active spacecraft in its fleet, SpaceX can always have one ready to fly. NASA and private companies know they can count on Dragon to be available, whether for a scheduled mission or an emergency need. No other spacecraft offers that kind of readiness right now. And Dragon keeps pushing further. Each spacecraft was originally certified for five flights, but they've already shown they can go beyond that. One Dragon Endeavor recently completed its sixth mission, showing that the design is even more durable than expected. That means more missions, more cost savings, and more value for NASA. Looking to the future, Dragon will even play a role in helping the ISS retire safely when the time comes. It's not just a spacecraft for today's missions. It's also part of the final chapter of the ISS itself. That's how important it has become. And so when you place Dream Chaser next to Dragon in 2025, the difference couldn't be clearer. One is still waiting for its very first flight. The other has become the most proven and dependable spacecraft in NASA's fleet. The contrast grows sharper with every delay. And it raises the question, will Dream Chaser ever catch up?
The answer depends entirely on Sierra Space's ability to get tenacity into orbit. That launch will define the program's future. If it succeeds, Dream Chaser could finally begin building momentum, moving forward with its cargo missions and eventually carrying people. If it fails or continues to stall, the spacecraft risks being remembered as another great idea that couldn't keep up. Right now, Dream Chaser stands at a crossroads. The design, the support, and the vision are all there. But the longer it sits on the ground, the harder it becomes to justify its place. With Dragon flying more missions and Starliner at least trying to push forward, Sierra Space has no time left to waste. The first flight must happen soon, or the dream of Dream Chaser could fade away completely.